Hey everybody, Abby Ashley here, and today I'm going to be sharing with you some reasons why I love ConvertKit. ConvertKit is my email service provider. I've decided that they are the people that I want to stick with for the long run too, and there's a couple of reasons why, which I'm going to be sharing with you in this video. So I thought I would take a little bit of time just to share with you uh, my list building journey and why I think list building is something to definitely have on your radar as virtual assistants. So um, if you're joining live, definitely comment below and um, I'll do a little bit of Q&A at the, the end. So if you have questions about list building, about ConvertKit, in particular, then uh, definitely drop your question below. And also let me know that you're here, give me a shout out. So um, let's talk really quickly about um, just my personal journey with using um, email as a, uh, a tool for sales and uh, a way to grow our business. So for um, most of us are virtual assistants, we are starting out in the virtual assistant realm. And what I usually tell most people is, um, you know, focus in the very beginning um, on getting your first client um, with with just the people that you know, right? The the personal outreach template we have that um, on uh, on our website, thevirtualsavvy.com. Go to the swag files. Uh, everyone loves our swag files, and um, we have that personal outreach template, guys. Reaching out to your friends and family, um, not trying to sell them your services necessarily, but just like you know, one business owner, um, right? If I say, do you know a business owner? Probably one person, at least each of you know one person that comes to mind, somebody that owns a business. They're a real estate agent, they're an insurance agent, they own you know, a brick and mortar store, they have an online business. Everybody knows one business owner. Just like you know one business owner, each one of your friends and family know one business owner. So it's great to reach out to those friends and family. Um, and I think that that's the best way just to kind of get the word out there about your business in the beginning. However, once you have a client, um, what I chose to do, and I, looking back, I'm like, oh my gosh, whoever gave me the advice, start building a list early, I just wanna go back and just hug them because um, it has just so changed my business. Um, it's changed the way that I get leads, that I get referrals, that I make sales. And, um, and, and that's what uh, this next week, actually, we're going to be talking all about ConvertKit. Um, so uh, my list building journey in particular, um, I, I did, you know, kind of what I, what I mentioned, I started reaching out to some people, went to a couple local networking meetings, um, just got my services out there. Like, here's what I do. I'm a virtual assistant. Boom. Right. And I got it out there. Um, and I, I, I immediately, I started asking, uh, my clients, even like people who were like, I'm not ready for you yet. I'll say, Hey, that's okay. Could I go ahead and like, maybe put you on my email list? Um, that way you can just get updates about the business. I do, you know, I give out tips for business owners, things like that. Um, and most of them would be like, oh yeah, sure, that'd be great. And so I would get on, you know, I'd, I'd bring them on my email list. Um, and so I slowly started building that. And guys, it took a while. And I think that that's okay. I think that um, in the beginning, right, our, our focus needs to be getting clients and needs to be um, serving our clients well, making sure that we're doing really good work for them. However, if you could have this little thing, you know, it's like this little thing just kind of growing in the background, this um, uh, this thing that, that could eventually um, be, be a huge thing for your business. So, because here's, here's, here's the deal, right? Getting our one-on-one -on -one clients is awesome and um, you can 100% replace your income like that. But if you are wanting to grow into maybe, like look to where, man, what would I maybe want to be doing five years from now? Would I want to be, you know, doing more of an agency model um, where I'm servicing maybe, you know, 50, 100 clients, hundreds of clients, right? Um, would I want to be um, selling really high-end services? Would I maybe want to launch a course in whatever I'm going to specialize in? If you're a copywriter, maybe you want to do a copywriting course someday. Um, do you want to do coaching? Do you want to bring people? Any of those things, having a list is just such a vital resource. If you're like, Abby, like, I'm cool. I just want to work with like maybe two or three clients and that's all I really want to do. 
that's fine. Maybe this list building as a virtual assistant probably isn't for you. Um, but if you're like, man, I could see myself in a few years really going beyond this, then I, I love the idea of just having this little, this little thing brewing in the background and you can be bringing on more and more people. So, um, so that's what I did. I started to email um, my list, even if it was, you know, it was 10, 15 people, I'm still gonna email them, right? Um, I'd start emailing them. I just did like twice a month, I would do a little newsletter of like just tips, things that would be helpful for them, right? And of course, I would have links to, you know, book calls with me, um, different services that I offered as well. But I tried to make my, my, um, my information really, really valuable. And even if, even if you're not like, man, I'm not a blogger, it's okay, shoot a video. And, you know, send them a video of something that you've learned or a topic or um, you can send them to other people's content every once in a while too it doesn't always have to be your original content that you're sending them um, but just just that you know you're staying top of mind right when somebody's email comes in your um, inbox and it's there on a regular basis so in my opinion twice a month is good for just starting out um, then it's you know, it's like, oh, it's that repetition. You're always top of mind, right? Um, so that when they're ready for your services, boom, right there. Um, so that's that's what I, I started to do, kept doing that. Um, and then once I was fully booked out, I, I was like, okay, well, I've kind of got my client thing going. I had quite a few subcontractors working for me. And I was like, well, um, I, I have more time now, honestly. So I'm going to dive deep into list building. Um, and that is at the point when I um, actually moved to ConvertKit. So I was not always with ConvertKit. I, I did have a different um, email subscriber at first. Um, I, I don't know why. I think I just didn't even know a ConvertKit existed. I was like not in the world that much of email marketing. And once I made the switch to ConvertKit, something really happened um, in my uh, mentality toward list building where it was like, man, I'm gonna make this a priority now. So I started building my list. Um, so over about those three years where I wasn't really focusing on it, I went from zero to a thousand. I, I was maybe at like a thousand, thirteen hundred email subscribers, uh, which was good of three years of not really, you know, it was just like a little here and there. I'd maybe throw out a freebie and get people to, um, to, to opt into my list. So slowly started building that email list. Um, and then I was like, all right, full in, I'm going to, I'm going to do this thing. And so um, that was in, I had about 1300 email subscribers in, um, cause it was when I launched the VA bootcamp course the very first time. So that was in what, like October, November, the very first bootcampers will probably correct me on this. Um, it was in or like the fall of 2016. Um, and so I, I said, I'm going to focus, like, this is going to be one of my main focuses is list building. And so I went from those thousand email subscribers to 10,000 um, from 2016 to 2017. And now midway through 2018, the time of this live stream, um, I am at about 22, 20, 22, 23,000 email subscribers. So, um, so, you know, really putting a focus on list building, I'm growing um, close to, you know, 10,000 a year. Um, and that I think is going to keep ramping up soon because I'm just constantly testing out new strategies. So, um, so I'm going to go through and I'm going to tell you the top 10 reasons um, why I personally love ConvertKit, why I use ConvertKit. And then I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions that you guys have um, just about ConvertKit, about email marketing in general. Um, it's something that I don't talk about a lot because again, I, I really, my, um, my specialty, like what I love to teach is just getting, like introducing people to virtual assistants, having them get that first, th those first couple of clients, like, you know, replacing their income with virtual assistants. Like that's what I usually talk about is like the journey to there. And I do feel like this is a little bit more of an advanced strategy. So I don't talk about it a lot, but I was excited just to take, um, you know, take some time, introduce you to a tool that I really love that I use a lot um, so that you guys can learn more about it. So always fun to do. Um, this is also good for your clients. So even if you're like, oh, I am so not there, convert kit. I mean, a ton of people, um, online marketers, especially course creators, coaches, a lot of people use convert kit. Um, so it's also just good to know in the background, um, what is appealing if you're maybe helping somebody make that decision. So, um, let's do really quickly. Let's see who's here. Cause I haven't really paid a whole lot, um, to, 
the comments yet. Uh, 10,000 a year. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy when you make one focus guys, I am like, um, this is, this is something that's so different than when I first started my business, but I've started doing this thing where I'm like, I'm going to do one like big thing each year. Like, like what's my one big thing that I want to accomplish. And, um, for me, it's really easy just to put that in email subscribers. It's like, all right, this is my big goal. How am I going to get there? Right. And so reaching 10,000 was a really, really big deal for me. Um, I was like, I'm going to make that happen. My goal is to be at 30,000 by the end of the year, um, which I think we should be able to do. Um, so yeah, I, um, uh, but then what I do beyond that is I make, um, I make a big quarterly goal and then I make one monthly goal. So like, if you look at my calendar right now, um, I, I use something called team up for my calendar. Um, it's awesome. It's a free tool. Um, and I will put like one goal, like this is my one thing that I'm doing this month. Right. And it's like other stuff will happen, but like, if I'm going to move my business forward in one way, how's that going to happen? And so like a lot of times, most of those activities for me have to do with like list building. So, um, it's crazy what can happen with focus, right? Um, Hey, yearly goals. Love it. I love it so much. Um, Oh, Jessa, it's your first time watching me live. Hello. Welcome. <laughs> um, Ooh, Carol finally got over her fear and sent out the outreach email this morning. I'm so excited. Carol has like the most beautiful logo ever. She's a boot camper. I love it. Um, charity from Virginia's here. Awesome. You guys are awesome. Okay, so we have some questions coming in. I love it. I'm gonna do questions at the very end, okay? Um, so let me just tell you really quickly 10 reasons why I love ConvertKit, and why don't I share my screen for this so that you guys can actually um, visually see in my ConvertKit account um, and see some of the reasons why I love this platform so much, okay? So give me just a second. It's gonna look a little funky. Let's do this, okay. So this is ConvertKit. If you guys have not seen inside it before, um, this is uh, when you log into the platform, you'll be brought to this dashboard, okay? Um, and right away, you'll see, whoa, like what are all these numbers? Um, so one of the reasons, and it's actually the first reason why I love ConvertKit is um, the metrics. They are just so good at providing um, just the information that you need to know. And um, this is actually a newer chart. So they've changed their interface. Um, so this this is like really, really new. Um, so I love how they have subscriber growth, but then they have um, net new subscribers. So I can even like go, let's say I wanna look at, this is March, May, June, July, August, September. If I just wanna be like, how many email subscribers did I get in the past week, right? Um, I can do that to that, and then it'll show me not only the new subscribers, um, so like here's um, for, uh, for August, right? So in August, um, I got 2,945 new subscribers, um, but 675 canceled, so that meant I got 200, uh, 2,270 net new subscribers. I really like the net new subscribers. Um, this is like a new feature because it's like, how much did your list really grow? Because guys, let me just forewarn you. If you start an email list, well, if you start a business in general, welcome to being rejected. <laughs> Starting a business, people are going to reject you. You have to develop thick skin. People are going to unsubscribe from your emails. Don't consider it a personal attack. Although if you, huh, let me tell you this, once you start running Facebook ads, then start expecting personal attacks. That's something I've learned. I'm like, people can be mean. Oh my goodness. Um, so people are going to unsubscribe from your emails. It happens. It's totally normal. 675 people last month said, I don't want you in my inbox. And you know what? It's okay because 2,270 people did. And those are the people who are my people anyways, right? Um, if I'm annoying anybody else, then they, then they weren't, they can go on to somebody who resonates more with them and that's fine. Um, I unsubscribe from people all the time um, just because I'm like, okay, what's the most pertinent to me right now in my business, right? Um, what's, I just don't want my email cluttered. So 
Anyways, metrics, that's what we're talking about. Number one, um, I love the metrics. I love the reporting system. Um, whenever you go to forms, there's this awesome graph that shows you um, not only your email subscribers, but where they're actually coming from. So you can see like most people are downloading my checklist and starter kit. That's the main thing that I advertise. Um, so again, you can adjust this by like, oh, you know, the last year, all time. That's kind of fun. Watch this. Woo See, it started out small, y'all. It started out real small. Oh, look, like what? Three people joined my list. <laughs> it started small. So um, no, humble beginnings. <laughs> it's okay. Um, so uh, just, just so much reporting here. Um, you can see how each one of your opt-ins. So these are the different opt-ins that I have. I have a become a booked out uh, virtual assistant training. And this is how many people visited that page, how many actually subscribe, so I can see that this landing page is converting at like 36%. This one's a little bit more, 51%. Um, so, you know, there, there's just really, really good reporting on each of the emails you send out. Um, it's gonna give you metrics as well, as far as, you know, how many people opened, how many people clicked. My open rates are like really bad right now because um, we need to clean out the list, honestly. We're probably getting ready to delete about 5,000 people from the list. Um, and I just do that about once a year. I go and I email a few times and it's like, hey, you haven't opened an email in a while, which ConvertKit makes it really easy to do. And say, you haven't opened an email in a while. Um, you know, do you still want to be on the list? And I send them three emails and they say, if they don't respond or if they don't like click this little link, then, um, then I delete them from the list. So we're at like 23,000. We're going to go down to probably like 18 or 19,000 here soon, just because I'm going to clean my list up. So my open rates can get higher again. Cause it's like, what's the point of having them on the list? Um, if they're not going to open the emails. So that's my opinion. Um, so metrics, the reporting is really, really awesome. I can answer questions about the metrics as well, but you can see even just here, um, you know, what are, what are these open rates? See, here's my, should I unsubscribe you? These are the people that don't answer the emails <laughs> that don't open the emails. Um, okay. So forms and tags. Um, so I showed you the forms earlier. So the, well, this is number two. This is number two reason why I love ConvertKit forms and tags. So, um, I've used other, I've used other platforms before where you literally had to have like different lists for each type of, um, you know, for everything that happened. Um, and I love that it's all in one list in ConvertKit and that people can just get tagged differently. So I can go through and I can see um, for a certain subscriber, I can I can click on their name and I can see where did they come from? And it'll tell me, well, they came from, you know, they opted in to your 101 services freebie. They opted in, you know, they were part of our last July launch. They came in during that. And so I can look and I can see what form did they come into, um, AKA where did they, you know, opt in. Um, but then I can also give them tags. So maybe this person, you know, opted into um, my, during our VA Biz in Five last July, we did that um, promotion. Um, and maybe people can see, you know, they opted in there, but then they went on and they bought just the toolbox, right? Um, so they bought just one of my products. So I could give them a tag. So what I do is I tag everybody who purchased things and you can tag for other things as well. Um, there's also segmentation. Um, so you can put people in big batch groups. So if you want to like email everyone except for people who did blank, um, except for people who, um, you know, except for people who are boot campers, except for people who um, like GDPR, which we'll talk about here in a second, I can email everybody except for people who are in the EU. You can filter people out by country. I can email everybody except for people who, um, I can email everyone who just subscribed in the last week if I want to. You can filter it by date and time, which I think is really great too. Um, so the forms and the tagging system is just really, really awesome. Um, you go to the tags by going to subscribers. I'm actually not gonna click on this right now because it'll actually pop up with people's email addresses and I don't wanna put that on live stream um, for the confidentiality reason. So I'm trying to keep this without showing anybody's emails um, since it's live. Um, number three, sequences, okay y'all sequences i love sequences y'all heard about 
funnels, right? Um, building an email funnel has totally changed my business. Um, you can totally build a funnel to go to your services. It's basically a series of emails, a training, a series of things that they'll receive over time, right? That funnels them to like book a discovery call with you. Um, so that would be a funnel. Um, and you can do that inside of ConvertKit. So, um, so I have different funnels here, right? And, um, and again, the metrics are awesome, but these are just the emails that people get um, that I don't have to send them out every single time, right? So let's say um, somebody joins like the VA bootcamp, right? We'll, we'll go into that one. Um, let's see, I have a lot here. Um, what I do, I just kind of, um, you can see my organization system, like these, the star ones are all my funnels. And then here's like cancellation emails, live event stuff. And then I have all the opt-ins. Like, so if they need multiple emails for an opt-in, then those are all there. Previous stuff is stuff that I'm not really using right now, but I'm going to keep it just because, um, you know, I like how it's all alphabetical here. Okay. So then I have welcome. So here's like welcome savvy tech, welcome savvy tech somebody purchases an annual, welcome for VA bootcamp. So when somebody joins the VA bootcamp, um, I have it automatically set up that they're going to get an email every single Thursday um, for 12 weeks, right? So here's like the 12 weeks of emails. Um, that way I can just keep them involved. Like, hey, how's it going? How's it going? How's it going? You could, if you had something like this, um, you could set up to where if somebody joins your email list, then they get, you know, three or four weeks of like just welcome emails. Just like, you know, we want to indoctrinate them to who you are, the value provide. If you wrote one amazing blog post, you don't just have to send that out one time. You can put it into a sequence so that every time a new person joins your list, then they get an email. Um, and you can just copy the email that you sent out the first time that you sent out that blog post, right? Um, and then put it into a sequence so that they're getting that over time. Um, so I love this. I think that it's really, really awesome. Um, and again, the reporting um, measures are just really cool too. <laughs> it shows how many people subscribed, <coughs> how many unsubscribes, open rates, click rates, all this information is right there for you. So I can see, um, I love doing this because what's great with these sequences is that you can improve them over time. So it's like, all right, so people obviously really open the week one email, week two, and then it starts to go down, right? And so what what could I change in that? This one's down to like 49%. So it's funny because the let's celebrate email is not really being opened as much. So maybe I need to try to change the title and you can like make these little tweaks along the way um, to hopefully increase your open rates. Okay, let me just pop in, make sure everybody's doing good. Um, okay, so people are asking questions, good. We'll get into the questions in a moment. I just wanna make sure that everybody's still seeing everything cool. Um, okay, so metrics, number one, two, forms and tags, three, sequences. I love sequences. Um, so amazing, you saw how many I have, so a little addicted. Um, four, GDPR compliance, okay? Um, ConvertKit was one of, the, they were on top of it, man. They were so quick to be GDPR compliant. Um, if you guys are not, uh, if you're not aware of GDPR, um, you can go on the Virtual Savvy Facebook page and look through our videos. I did a, um, a really amazing training with Danielle Liss um, from Business Ease. She's my attorney friend. Um, and she went all through like, what is GDPR? How do you be GDPR compliant? So I'm not going to go into all of that today. But oh my goodness, they have made it so easy um, with ConvertKit that um, basically ConvertKit goes ahead and they know they know if somebody is in the eu so that they can give them a special um, opt-in form so not everyone will have to click these little buttons saying i consent only the people in eu uh, will do that and then what you can do is for people who don't consent because basically um like really really short version gdpr um is saying that you know um people can um, opt in to get your freebie, but then um, 
they can say, I don't want to receive any more marketing emails from you. And so that's fine. If somebody is GDPR, then I basically just send them their freebie and then I don't send them anything else. Um, that's just the per that's just the way I did it because it's like, if you, if you opt in, if you click the little buttons that ConvertKit gives you to say, yes, I want to keep getting more information from you, then I will continue to send you emails. But if not, then um, I can just segment people out. So watch this. So I can do a new broadcast, right? Um, so this is going to go to, oh, look, 18,000, uh, Bethany, my VA must have just, uh, deleted. So my list is down now. <laughs> we deleted those cold subscribers. There we go. Um, now my open rates are going to go up. I'm happy about it. All right. So here's, um, so this, this email would be going to everyone, right? But I can say, well, I want it to go to everybody except I don't want it to go to anybody who is in the segment EU, right? Oops. European Union. No consent. So these people did not give me consent to email them any longer. So that means this email is only going to go out to uh, 17,000 people, right? Um, I could say, you know, I only want to send it out to... Um, people who subscribe to the certain form. I only want to send this email to people who are in my become a booked out virtual assistant training, right? Um, and so that would go to this many people. So you can see how you can like really filter this really, really well. Um, so they were really quick to be GDPR compliant. Um, they make it super easy. There are blog posts on ConvertKit site of exactly how you make sure that um, your email, the way that you're getting email some subscribers is GDPR compliant. So that's one of the main reasons why I love ConvertKit is because they made that so, so easy. Um, number five, link triggers. So this is really cool too. Um, we'll just go ahead and we'll do, we'll just pretend like we're making an email here. Um, so I really like link triggers because, um, it's basically, you can write an email and you can say, Hey, if you want to do some, like, if you want to do something, click this link. And then when they click that link, nothing else has to happen on your end or on their end. ConvertKit will automatically do things for them. So let's, I'll, I'll show you, um, what I mean by this. So um, say that you say I'm sending out emails about a certain promotion. So I do this like when I sell the VA boot camp, I'll set, I'll, you know, I'll have all these marketing emails that are like, hey, you know, the boot camp is open, we're launching. Um, you know, and people get I send a lot of emails. I get a lot of subscribers during those times, but that's okay. Um, I usually send one or two emails a week. Um, but during launch time, I could be sending one email a day, I could be sending two or three emails a day, right? And so sometimes it's like people are like, Okay, Abby, I love your emails, but when you launch, like I I don't I don't send it to people who are already boot camps, but people there might be people who are like, Abby, I'm just not ready for that. Or maybe I, I already have like a multi six figure VA business. Like I don't need your boot camp, but I still want to get your emails, right? Um, so that's cool. So what I will do is I'll usually at the very bottom of the email, I'll do a link trigger. So I'll say like, love the virtual savvy, but don't want to hear about our launch. Click. This link to um, unsubs unsubscribe to our launch emails. Okay, so what I can do is I can say click this link. So just like always, you can do you know just insert a link unsubscribe. I made like a certain page just for these people. Um, so you can do that, but I can say I can tag people who subscribe to this link, right? And so when I tag people, I can, the tag can be like, don't, um, you know, don't send bootcamp launch or something like that. I can give them a certain tag. So then that way, if people click that link, then when I go back, right, to my, who am I sending this to? Well, I can say, you know, send it to all subscribers. Um, I probably wouldn't send it to my boot camp, so I'd say no to boot camp. But then I can also say anybody with the t uh, let's see, it would be. Hold on. I did that wrong. Okay, anyone who subscribed to the tag, and I could say I think I said see 
know to make bank webinar. So people who said, hey, I don't want to hear about this webinar, I gave them that tag. So it could say no VA bootcamp, add that filter. And then anyone who had clicked on that, it was a link trigger. Um, and your link triggers can do other things too. You can say that uh, this link, um, this link will give them um, this tag and then that tag will send them to this sequence. So if they click this link, then they're for the next three weeks gonna get these certain emails, but only if they click this link, right? So that's what link triggers are. I love them. Um, they're awesome. They're super, super, super helpful for doing your tagging and segmentation and just making sure that people are actually getting the information that they want to be getting, right? Um, so that's what link triggers are. Super, super awesome. Um, overall, number six, the clean looking interface. I mean, I just think that, um, in my opinion, for as much information as is given here, it's just a really, oops, um, it's just a really clean um a really clean layout it's a really easy to figure out where do i want to go where do i get my information it's just really clean and easy and i like that um that's one of the things that i'm a huge fan of um number seven um is their customer service so um you can see this little chat box over here um so they have all these uh resources right away but then they have chat too which i've always seen that they are very very quick to respond to um so and what i really like about convertkit too is that they are they're growing they take suggestions so for instance um you go over to broadcasts, okay? I, I'll just do my little claim to fame. One time I emailed them and I was like, hey guys, you know, I have all these broadcasts here. It'd be really great if there was a way to search through them. Like I wanna find, you know, this broadcast that I sent out that had this title. Um, so I was like, you should have a way to search. And literally like a week later, they were like, we did it. So this, the reason there's search broadcasts is because I made that suggestion Thank you, thank you. But really, like they're really attentive and they're always open to ideas, okay? Um, so if you, if there's something that's like frustrating you about the system, then just tell them and they will, they have like a feature request um, uh, option that you can choose and you can suggest features. So if you have ways to make things better, um, then they they will at least like heed your, you know, opinion and, and, and take note of it. Um, and if it's a really quick fix, then it could happen in a couple of days, like the search broadcast did. Um, so I really, really like their customer service. They're super uh, responsive and they're not just like, Oh, we've got this all figured out. Like they really listen to their customers, which I've been a huge fan of. Um, number eight would be the community. So, um, face, uh, Facebook on Facebook, there is a, um, a community for ConvertKit users, you guys can join it even if you're not a ConvertKit member because they're always looking, people are always looking for VAs. So if you know how to use ConvertKit, go into, uh, definitely go in there and uh, join that group as well. Um, but man, I've gotten, like if I need something like instantly, cause sometimes the chat, um, usually they're really quick, but sometimes it could take like an hour or two. If I post something in the group, people are on it, man. People are so on it. So really, really awesome community there. Um, there's also a conference that happens every year. Y'all, like literally the best conference. This past year, there were less than 500 people at this conference. It's called Craft and Commerce Go. I will be there next year, um, 2019. I'll see you all at Craft and Commerce. Uh, last year, Casey Neistat was there. Pat Flynn was there. Mariah Cause was there. Selena Sue was there. And everybody's just, it's like such a small conference that everybody's just chilling with each other. Like literally, I just like went and talked to Pat Flynn for like an hour. It was like crazy how just tight knit the group was. And it was so fun and super valuable information. I love that they, they put people on stage at all stages. So it wasn't just like the people who are millionaires and have got it all figured out on stage. Like they had people that had like, I think like a thousand email subscribers on the stage speaking too. Like it was, it was just every, they were like, let's just put everybody on the same playing field. Like we're all, it, some of us are at different levels, maybe financially or in business, but we're all just people like when we can all learn from one another. And I loved, loved, loved that. So uh, super cool conference. So definitely number eight would be the community and the conference. Um, I'm, I'm a huge fan, huge fan of um, the way that they've just been able to full to, um, 
foster a culture. Um, say that three times fast. <laughs> Number nine. Um, so one of the things that people have um, talked about is like, Abby, like, um, but what about making your emails more pretty, right? So like, um, can you do that with ConvertKit? Well, ConvertKit is, um, they are really trying to optimize their emails to, um, to, to get open, right? To not show, now that there's like the different files in like Gmail where stuff can get ultimate, all um, like automatically goes to like that promo file. They really try to make it to where your emails aren't gonna end up there, aren't gonna end up in spam. So that's why um, like whenever you um, do your email, you can view the content here. It's really basic and I like that. So I made, I jazzed it up a little. You can customize the templates. It's something that we teach you how to do in Savvy Tech is how to customize some of these templates. But I mean, like some other service providers, there's not a ton going on here. I have an image, um, you know, I have my logo and that's about all that I do, okay? Um, I have like these connect with me links down here at the bottom. It's not super, super fancy. Um, it's mostly just text-based, um, which people, it's like studies have shown people actually prefer that in their emails, okay? It doesn't have to have a ton of different stuff. Now, once a month, we do our what's up email. So just so you can see like what can be done. Um, let's see, where is what's up? Oh, look, I should, what? what? <laughs> I could search for it. Okay, September edition of what's up at the virtual Zabby. So you guys can see really quickly. Um, okay, so we do, there is a way to, like, we can put more images. Um, these are like, this is like a mega email, right? Um, this shows up really good on mobile. Um, so you can add more stuff to it, um, but it's a little less like pretty as some email service providers. Um, but that, um, you know, at least they say that leads to higher open rates. Um, so I'm cool with it. It's It makes it, you spend less time with design and just get straight down to the content, right? Um, so less design equals more open rates. It's reason number nine. And reason number 10 would be their free trial. So um, just so you guys know, you all have, if you go to the virtualsavvy.com slash convert kit, there we go. You go to the virtualsavvy.com slash convert kit. That is my affiliate link, um, but you will have the ability to um, get a free trial, which you can't see because I'm logged in, um, but it's a free trial. When, what I love about the free trial too, guys, is that, um, let me go ahead and take this down. One of the things I love about the free trial too um, is that you guys can use it as a learning experience. So like I said, we have a ConvertKit course inside of Savvy Tech. And so what a lot of people will do is that they'll say, okay, you know, um, I, I get this, 30 day, 30 or 14 day trial. Um, I get this trial, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna finish the, the Savvy Tech course so I can just learn ConvertKit inside and out during that free trial. And then that way it's um, another back, a back pocket resource to use for getting clients, right? Um, you, when they say, do you know ConvertKit? You can say, yes I do, I've taken a training in that. And so that's what a lot of people do is that they will take They'll get a month of Savvy Tech so they can take that ConvertKit course and then they will do the free month of ConvertKit, boom, learn it um, with a free trial. So even if you're not ready to list build, it could still be something that you could go ahead and sign up for um, just to get that, uh, just to learn it, right? To learn it for your clients. So, um, so these are the 10 reasons why I love ConvertKit. Um, I hope that this has been helpful for you. Man, I talk a long time. <laughs> Sorry about that. This is always Things always go longer than I expect them to. Hey, um, let me answer a couple of questions. I'll just do like five minutes of questions here because um, I do want to protect your time and I have a meeting here in a few minutes. So uh, let me look at this really quickly. Um, let's see. Chrissy says, I, I subscribe to some companies who pack so much into their emails. It's almost too busy to read. Yeah. I think that sometimes we like just forget 
um, that simplicity is really important. I know people who have like these multi six figure businesses that they, they send emails that are like this long, <laughs> like just like a couple sent like, I found this really cool article. You have to check it out. Click. <laughs> it's just like, man, like how many, how many people are, are like clicking on that link because it's all they said inside the email. Like it's okay to be concise. Um, <laughs> Hmm. See if we have some questions. Oh, uh, Jill says I like the convert kit template in Savvy Tech. You make it very easy to cut and paste. Save me so much time. Yeah. So if you liked the way that I like, I had a little bit of a custom template. There is one inside of Savvy Tech, so you can customize your emails, change the colors, change the logo, that kind of stuff. We spell it all out there for it. Um, so we're providing this top 10 list for us to refer back to. Yes. So um, next week, y'all, um, if, if you're watching this live, then next week there is a free training with ConvertKit. Uh, Isa, who you guys are just going to love her. She's a freaking doll. She's so sweet. She is doing a training for us. Um, and it's all it's going to be about getting clients. Um, with an email list. And I'm really excited uh, about that. So um, you can click on that using the link above. Uh, make sure that you are live for that training because it's going to be a really, really value-based training. Um, so that's happening next Wednesday. And then the following Thursday, there will be a blog post um, where we'll lay out these 10 steps and we'll also embed this video into it. So um, let's see. My client swears bear MailChimp, you have pros and cons of both that I can show them. It'd be good info for me too. So I don't necessarily have that. I know that if you just Google MailChimp versus ConvertKit, it's funny because most people will lean on the ConvertKit side. I see a lot of people switch. So um, like MailChimp, I think that they do have like, um, it's free for the first um, maybe like thousand email subscribers. Um, that's why a lot of people start with MailChimp, which is fine. Um, but I think if you, it, you know, for any kind of advance, if you want um, email list building to be a focus, then ConvertKit is the way to go. That's my opinion. Um, I think that the ease of use is easier. I, I have used MailChimp in the past. I think that ConvertKit is um, simpler. Um, like we said, just it's, it's less design, but that can actually be a value. Um, and, and the metrics and the reporting um, are just awesome. So uh, it's less clunky in my opinion. So um, that's that's me. Um, but there's definitely a ton of articles out there on you know which which like how the two um, line up side by side. Um, uh, just says I don't know if I missed it. How do I manage subscribers in ConvertKit? Do you mainly add new subscribers and delete those who unsubscribe? How does it sync up with your contacts database to an automatic update? So. Um, so yeah, so people can unsubscribe at any point on their own. You don't have to touch anything. So when they get an email, there's just an unsubscribe button at the bottom. So that's, so ConvertKit takes care of all of that. Um, ConvertKit has what's called forms. And so that's where people will, you, you, you can use that ConvertKit form and they'll put in, you can put it into your website. You can put it into a landing page. You can use their landing pages. Um, but those forms is how people will get on your list. Okay. So, um, if you have another tool, um, ConvertKit integrates with a lot of stuff. So for instance, if somebody found out about me on, um, like they just found my, like I have some courses on Teachable. So maybe they never subscribed to my email list, but they just came in and bought a course from me in Teachable. Then um, ConvertKit integrates with the two. So it would read that. Um, so there's a lot of integrations you can do. If there's not an integration, you can use something like Zapier to put the two together, but um, you can manually input subscribers. Like if you just have one person that's like, hey, like I give you consent to, to email me, always get consent, <laughs> always make sure that they um, have given you permission to, um, you know, to be added to your email list. Um, but you can manually, you can do, you can upload like an Excel spreadsheet. You can also just manually one by one if you just have like one person that enters. So hopefully that answers your question. But for the most part, I mean, most of this should be happening automatically because they're filling out their information and boom, it's um, it's going straight into ConvertKit. Um, let's see. I am not sure, Christina, that could be a good question. Um, Isa is gonna be able to have a lot of information on the webinar. Can you import 
funnels from other platforms into ConvertKit. So I don't know if you're meaning like um, like Infusionsoft or like ClickFunnels or what um, what kind. Um, I know, yeah, that would definitely be an easy question. <laughs> um, can you create funnels inside of ConvertKit and then use them? or use ConvertKit to manage them. So yeah, you can, I mean, there's something called an email funnel. So basically somebody um, subscribes to your list and then they get a series of emails and those series of emails all lead them to buying your course, right? So you could do like a five day challenge, right? And every single day they get an email and then at the very end, it's like book a discovery call with me. So that is considered a funnel. Um, there's, there's more advanced funnels where you add in like lots of landing pages and that kind of stuff, which could be done um, through ConvertKit as well. Um, it kind of just depends on what all you're creating if you would need another outside tool, right? Um, so I use ConvertKit forms, but I do integrate them with some other systems for my funnel, um, which we can talk about sometime, Christy. Um, so yes, you, split testing is something we didn't even talk about, Christina. Um, but you can split test like the emails. So if you if you're like, okay, I want to see which subject line would do better, you can A B split test your subject lines. Um, you can split test a bunch of different stuff inside ConvertKit, which I think is awesome. Um, <laughs> Oh, cool. I didn't even know this. I haven't actually used MailerLite, Darlene. So I love the detail with ConvertKit. MailerLite is very basic by comparison. Good to know. Yeah, I feel like ConvertKit has like so much information, but it's laid out so clearly that it's easy to understand. Um, let's see. Am I on a PC or Mac? I am on a Mac. I am a Mac girl. <laughs> oh, I accidentally subscribed three times to your email. So two of those unsubscribes are for me. That's funny. It's okay. I've I've subscribed to my own list multiple times, so some of those are probably me too. Um, let's see. Oh, the savvy tech training and convert kit is so amazing. That makes me so happy. Okay, so I think we maybe got all of the questions. Let me see if there's any up any others up top. Um, awesome. Oh, hey Susie. Good to see you, girl. Um, oh, here we go. Here's a link to share with your MailChimp client switching, uh, switching from MailChimp. So thanks for, for providing that Regina. Awesome. So I hope that this has been helpful. Again, I love ConvertKit. These are the 10 reasons why, uh, make sure you watch out for that webinar we'll be doing with Isa, as well as a blog post. If you're watching a replay of this, you're probably on the blog post, uh, maybe watching it already. Um, but we will have a, a full blog post that outlines these 10 reasons why I love ConvertKit as well. Um, and again, make sure you go to the virtualsavvy.com slash ConvertKit and you can get a free trial. Um, so thank you all so much. Have an awesome Thursday. Bye.